When you're looking at a line structure, it's really important that you're able to visualize the whole entire molecule, including the carbon atoms that are not being drawn on the line structure and also the hydrogen atoms that are not being drawn on the line structure as well as carbon hydrogen bonds. So what we're gonna do in this video is practice looking at line structure structures and interpreting them understanding how many atoms are present and where those atoms are present, essentially converting them to Lewis structures. So as before we get into this, as we're getting into this, we've got to keep a couple of things in mind. Number one, when we're looking at a line structure, we are not seeing any of the hydrogen atoms that are bonded to the carbon atoms. So all of the hydrogens that are on or bonded to carbon atoms are missing from this structure, and we are going to have to fill them in. Also, we need to keep in mind that all carbon atoms in the molecule are there, but they are not drawn. So we don't have that C symbol to indicate that the carbons are there. So bonds that look like they are not um, connected to any particular atom are connecting carbon atoms. So let's, let's start with this molecule right here. This molecule doesn't have any atomic symbols in it at all, which means that it contains just carbons and hydrogens. And so we can see that this molecule has a total of one, two, three, four bonds at least. And all of those bonds that we're looking at, because we don't see an atomic symbol associated with any of those bonds, we know that all of those bonds are between carbon atoms. So what we can do for starters, I'm actually gonna just try, I'm gonna try to copy this. What we can do for starters is highlight the location of all of the carbon atoms. So there's going to be carbon atoms in these positions right here. Actually, I'm gonna choose a different color that's more visible. So that is where we will find our carbon atoms. And that's step number one. Now, I wonder if we can actually draw those carbon atoms in, no can't draw them in without erasing the whole molecule. So let's just, let me just re, redraw this and draw the carbon atoms in. So here are the carbon atoms and let's highlight them in this drawing right here. Now our next step is to fill in the hydrogen atoms on this molecule. And we're gonna fill in the hydrogen atoms. We, we know that none of the hydrogen atoms are being shown. We know that none of the carbon hydrogen bonds are being shown, but we also know that the carbon hydrogen bonds are the only bonds that are missing from this structure. So all carbon hydrogen bonds are missing and that means when we look at an atom, like when we look at a carbon atom, this guy right here, and we can see that this carbon atom has only one visible bond, we know that the rest of its bonds, the missing bonds, must all be bonds to hydrogens. If they were bonds to any other atom, like an oxygen or another carbon, that bond would be shown, that would be visible. The only bonds that we don't see are the bonds between carbons and hydrogens. Let's look at the next guy over here. So for this carbon right here, we can see two of its bonds, which means that it has four bonds invisible, or excuse me, two bonds invisible, and those two bonds must be two hydrogen atoms. Now, pause, you might be wondering, how do I know how many bonds should be on that carbon atom? How am I, how am I knowing how many hydrogens to add? Well, let's look back. We covered this a while ago when we were talking about common bonding trends for atoms in our molecules. The common bonding trend for carbon is that it likes to form a total of four bonds. 
in any kind of variety, but it always likes to have four bonds. So what we're doing when we're filling these hydrogens in is just giving our carbon atom the four bonds that it wants to have. So let's continue down this molecule. Here's our next carbon atom, and we can see that it has one, two, three, four visible bonds, which means this carbon atom isn't missing any of its bonds, so it doesn't have a hydrogen attached to it. And for the next carbon in the skeleton, we have one, two, three, four visible bonds, so it also is not missing any bonds, and it does not have any hydrogens. And our last carbon atom, we can see one of its bonds, which means that it has three bonds we are not seeing, and those three bonds must all be two hydrogens. Let's continue with another example. Let's move on to this molecule right here. The first thing that we want to do with this molecule is recognize that every bond where we do not see an atom explicitly drawn at the beginning or the end, that particular bond is representing a carbon-carbon bond. So what I'm doing here is tracing in all of the bonds where we do not explicitly see an atom at one end or another or both. Those are all carbon atoms and carbon-carbon bonds. So let's begin by drawing those guys. Let me dot the carbons again. One, carbon here, carbon here, carbon here, carbon here, and a carbon here. So our skeleton is going to look like this. And I'm angling these bonds so that it matches the shape of the line structure to make it easier for us to follow when we're looking at the two. So I've got my carbon-carbon bonds filled in. My next strategy is to fill in the other atoms that are visible in the line structure, the other atoms that I know are present. So I know that I have a carbon-bromine bond right here and I'm gonna draw that guy. Now here's some, something that um, some students get mixed up on. When they look at the line structure, at this particular line structure right here, they want to see a carbon atom located at the end of this line. So they want to squeeze another carbon in. Don't do that. This is a bond between a carbon and a bromine. Remember, the only bonds that we don't see are bonds between carbons and hydrogens. Bonds between carbons and bromines, we definitely see those. So let's also draw this bond right here. This is a carbon to oxygen double bond. And um, I should probably draw the lone pairs on these atoms since you're still new to organic chemistry. It might make you feel nervous to not see the lone pairs. We're going to start leaving them off. And now what we need to do, since we have all of our carbons and we have the bromine and the oxygen, our last job is to fill in the hydrogens. And we're gonna do that by remembering every carbon atom wants to have a total of four bonds. So we'll look at a carbon atom, we'll see how many bonds are visible to us. In this case, we can only see one. And that means that that carbon needs three more bonds. This guy right here, this carbon, we can see one, two, three of its bonds, which means that it has one bond invisible to us, and that bond is to a hydrogen. Next carbon over, we can see one, two bonds, which means we cannot see two bonds. They must be to hydrogens. And the next carbon over is the same. We can see two of its bonds, so it must have two bonds to hydrogen. This carbon, we can see one, two, three, four bonds, so it does not have any hydrogens. And our last carbon, we can only see one bond, so that is a carbon with three hydrogens. So hopefully this is starting to feel a little bit easier. Let's move on to this example right here. What do we have? Um, let's just start by identifying our carbon atoms. There they are, like that. Remember, there is no carbon atom right here. This is a carbon-oxygen bond. We would not hide a carbon atom in this location. So there are the carbon atoms in this molecule. Let's draw them and draw our bond to the oxygen as well. 
And this is this particular molecule is like a combination of line structure and condensed structure because I have that OH that's condensed together. So we can go ahead and expand that OH bond out if we'd like. And now we are going to fill in the hydrogens on our carbons as needed so that every carbon has a total of four bonds. First carbon has one, two, three, four bonds. Carbon number two has one, two, three, four bonds. Carbon number three has one, two, three, four bonds. Perfect. And now we are ready for our last example. So let's start by finding our carbon atoms. Here they are. And then let's go ahead and sketch those carbon atoms together. That last carbon that I drew looked a lot like an oxygen. So there's all of our carbons and we've I've remembered to include the double bond. And now we're going to continue to go through this molecule, see how many bonds each carbon has visible to us and add hydrogens as needed so that each carbon has a total of four bonds.